Tonight in the Daily News Roundup, Vibes Cartel transferred following fiancé's Fox 5 interview. Education Minister bemoans tragic death of Kingston Technical High School student. Police interview and release father after fatal shooting of his son. Police charge one of two men who removed lock on the gate to Bogwalk Gorge. JCF receives over 50 new vehicles. Prosecutor gets six-month suspension for professional misconduct. And Portmore stop order fiasco has H.A. J construction unapproved. Good evening, I am Abigail Smythe. We begin tonight with the news that the Department of Correctional Services is tight-lipped on the transfer of popular entertainer Vibes Cartel to the Tower Street Adult Correctional Center known as GP. He was being held at Horizon Adult Remand Center after he was initially removed from GP. However, he was reportedly transferred back to GP Thursday afternoon during the heavy rains. The transfer follows an interview done by Fox 5 New York Lisa Evers with Cartel Turkish fiancé Sidem Ozturk, which was published on Tuesday. It is understood that the entertainer has been placed on a block called Jail, which houses high-risk prisoners and is equipped with a security camera facing all cells. Meanwhile, his lawyer, Isat Buchanan, has labelled the sudden transfer of cartel as an attempt at his life. Mr. Buchanan said, quote, Transferring Mr. Palmer in the rain, causing him to get wet, given his medical condition, is an attempt at his life. It is deliberate and or negligent and unacceptable. End quote. The attorney said no reasons were given by the Department of Correctional Services for the transfer. Mr. Buchanan lamented that the entertainer's case is before the highest court of the land and added that he is disappointed that taxpayers' money is being wasted for fishing expeditions and PR stunts. Vibes Cartel has been in prison for 11 years after being sentenced to life in 2014 for the murder of Clive Lizard Williams. He is to serve 35 years before he becomes eligible for parole. Education Minister Favel Williams has called the stabbing death of Kingston Technical High School student Mission Campbell a tragedy on so many levels. Addressing students this morning as part of a series of consultation sessions on the proposed national grooming policy, the minister said a young life was lost in a moment of anger and another blighted because of a senseless act of violence. The 16-year-old student succumbed to injuries after she was stabbed by her 17-year-old schoolmate during a dispute on Thursday at the Hanover Street-based institution in downtown Kingston. Minister Williams stated that, quote, we must learn to resolve our issues without resorting to violence, end quote. She said the Education Ministry has partnered with the Ministry of Justice to bring restorative justice practices to schools to help students navigate a conflict-laden society. She added that, quote, it is not that we are ever going to do away with conflicts. What we want to learn is how we manage our conflicts, how we de-escalate conflicts, how we get out of the conflicts, how we not become a part of conflicts to a point where we have violence and death, end quote. The father of 15-year-old Wilma's Boys School fifth form student Rahim Shaw, who was mistakenly shot dead at his home Wednesday morning, was interviewed today by the police in the presence of his lawyer Peter Champagny. He was later released. Champagny said investigations are continuing and is likely that the police will be seeking the advice of the Director of Public Prosecutions on the matter. Rahim was mistakenly shot at 3.15 a.m. on Wednesday by his father, who is a licensed firearm holder at their home in Helsher, St. Catherine. Reports are that the boy's mother heard sounds at the front of the house and awoke her husband, informing him that an intruder was outside. It is further reported that the father went to investigate and, on hearing someone opening the front door, fired three shots through the door. He later discovered that it was his son. The boy was rushed to hospital where he was pronounced dead.
Investigators from the Public Safety and Traffic Enforcement Branch, PSTEB, have charged one of two men seen on video on Monday trying to remove the lock to the gate to the Bogwalk Gorge. The gate was closed after the roadway became flooded during heavy rain from Tropical Storm Ian. Glenora Denton, a 45-year-old excavator operator of West Prospect in Bogwalk, has been charged with conspiracy, malicious destruction of government property and accessory before and after after the fact. Mr. Denton has also been charged with breaching the Odpem Act after entering a restricted area. He is to appear before the St. Catherine Parish Court on October 6. The other man who apologized for the incident during an interview with RJR was given until 3 o'clock today to turn himself in at the Peace Step headquarters at the Ellitson Road Police Station. Sophia Thomas, the first prosecutor in Jamaica's legal history to be found guilty of professional misconduct, was suspended today from practicing as a lawyer for six months, effective November 1. Thomas was also ordered by the General Legal Counsel, GLC, to pay $100,000 in legal costs to complainant Lowell Spence, a National Commercial Bank branch manager, and $300,000 in legal costs for the legal oversight body. She was also ordered to participate in two ethics courses. Spence was represented by attorney Matthew Hyatt of the law firm Knight, Jr. and Samuels. The disciplinary committee of the GLC found that while Thomas worked in the office of the Director of Public Prosecutions, she violated the canons of professional ethics while prosecuting a fraud case in the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court in November 2017. The ruling arose from a complaint made in 2019 by Spence, who was freed of fraud charges in November 2017. Spence complained that Thomas knowingly used false evidence and or participated in the creation or use of evidence that she knew to be false. The matter was taken to the GLC and Thomas was found guilty of professional misconduct. The decision came down while she was on secondment to the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions in the Turks and Caicos Islands. Arising from the ruling, Thomas subsequently resigned from that post in mid-August and has since moved to seek to return to her job in Jamaica. Her request was sent by DPP Paula Llewellyn to the Public Service Commission for advice and a decision. And 59 new vehicles were handed over to the Jamaica Constabulary Force as part of the National Security Rock Project. The vehicles are to boost the overall fleet of vehicles and capacity of police officers to respond to incidents and improve overall service delivery. Commissioner of Police Major General Anthony Anderson says the new vehicles, which were handed over by Minister of National Security Dr. Harris Chang, will significantly aid in mobility, a key pillar in which officers operate to tackle crime and violence, especially with the launch of Operation Relentless 2. Our mobility is one of the key pillars on which we operate. It's critical in an environment where the persons who are doing the wrong things in society are very mobile. They are tra traversing the country and we also need to be able to, to move likewise and intercept them and um, engage them as necessary. The Portmore Municipal Corporation has placed a stop order on the construction of houses at the Sandown Palms development weeks after a groundbreaking ceremony featuring Prime Minister Andrew Holness. Portmore Mayor Leon Thomas said the developers of the project, Housing Agency of Jamaica, HAJ, started construction of housing units without submitting building plans to the Municipal Corporation for approval. The mayor acknowledged that since since the issuance of the stop order, a building plan has been submitted and is pending approval. HAJ Chairman Norman Brown said the agency has always complied with the law, insisting that no attempt was made to circumvent the authority of the corporation. St. Catherine Southern Member of Parliament Fitz Jackson, while voicing his objection to the housing development at the current location, has also questioned the cost of the units. He argued that the site was slated for commercial development and though he knows there is a need for houses, he cannot support the housing development. He added that, quote, as I understand it, the cost for these houses is in the $22 million range and they were supposed to be middle-income houses, end quote. 
The lawmaker criticized the cost as unacceptable, arguing that the price tag exceeded sums demanded for similar type houses currently being developed in Portmore by private interests. Brown, however, dismissed the notion that the houses were priced out of the reach of middle-income Jamaicans, noting that developers needed to turn a reasonable profit. The Prime Minister, who broke ground for the project in August, disclosed then that the price for the units would be determined as soon as construction began. The gated community will comprise 142 semi-detached townhouses with an average lot size of 146 square meters and six standalone units with 205 square meters of space. And that's it for the Daily News Roundup for today. I'm Abigail Smythe, wishing you pleasant viewing. Teach them! Hey, yo, hello! Send the message and make it reach them. It's teach them right here. Warlord representing. Thank you for watching. Like the video before you go. Please subscribe if you haven't done so. And remember to share the video with your friends and family. And browse the channel for more quality content. Until next time. Walk good, my friends. Teach them!